It takes hours and at least three people to set up this loom properly. These long strings of wool form the base of a blanket that's called lishnik. It's made from sheep's wool by the Hutsul people, an ethnic minority in Ukraine that's been weaving for more than a century. As the Russian invasion of Ukraine goes on, Natalia Kishuk feels that weaving today is more important than ever. Uh, we went to Yavoriv in western Ukraine two days before the Russian invasion to see how these woolen blankets are woven and how this traditional craft is still standing. These are Carpathian sheep, a local breed that's been raised by the Hutsul people for more than 700 years. Ah, Shearing time comes once a year when the weather gets warmer. It takes wool from three sheep to make one blanket. Natalia washes the raw wool in boiling water before rinsing it in cold water. She then hangs it outside to get cleaned again by the rain. All this is to remove the strong smell and make the yarn whiter. Natalia and her husband Yaroslav were both born into weaving families. Today, they run the business with their children. Natalia is a artist, and she is more practical. We try to unite Yaroslav uses this wooden comb with metal teeth to untangle the wool. Natalia dyes some of the wool before transforming it into yarn using a wooden spindle. This process takes time, so Natalia plans her next patterns and designs while she spins. These songs have been passed down from one generation to the next. Natalia's 15-year-old daughter, Yulia, still sings them today. She started to weave at the age of three. Ліжникарство в цьому цьому в цій справі в моїй родині, і я повинна продовжувати. She says singing while weaving brings her peace of mind. Natalia inherited this old loom from her grandfather, who built it more than seven decades ago. Together with her husband and daughter, they add the thread. It's used as a base for the blanket, and it shouldn't be too thin or too thick. Otherwise, it can break during weaving. It's an important step that takes expertise and patience. <laughs> Natalia then adds the yarn in between the threads. A simple pattern takes seven to eight hours to weave. The more complicated ones take two to three days. In the past, the Hutsul wove basic black, gray, and white blankets for their own use. But in the 1920s, artist Paraska Karol Skribliak introduced more colors to the designs and passed the craft to others in the village and to Natalia's grandmother. Natalia's mother was a mathematician, and her father was a physicist. Her mother made blankets as a hobby, but weaving wasn't profitable, so she wanted a different life for her daughter. But Natalia's passion for weaving always pulled her back to it, and she found a way to make money by selling it online. Today, these blankets are the main source of income for the family. Hutsul patterns feature diamonds, lines, and curves, and every shape means something. The Hutsul people have held on to their dialect and beliefs for hundreds of years. They're an ethnic group, believed to have settled in the ivano frankivsk region in western Ukraine in the 13th and 14th centuries. 
The region has defended itself against the Mongol and Tatar invasions in the 13th century. And then from Poland, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Imperial Russia in the 18th century. And now, as Ukraine lives through an invasion from Putin's Russia, they're resolved to defend their home as strongly as ever. So far, this part of Western Ukraine has not seen fighting, and staying in their village is necessary for patriotic and practical reasons. They need the machines, the natural resources, and the community to keep their business going. There are 20 families that still work in weaving in this Hutzel village of 2,000 people. Natalia carries her blankets over this narrow bridge to a nearby Valulo, a river-powered wooden device that spins with the flow of the water. It acts as a natural washing machine. A flood in 2008 destroyed three out of the five machines that were used. Today, there are only two left in their village. Cleaning the woven blankets is physically demanding, but it's essential to get rid of any lingering sheep smell. Depending on the water temperature and the type of wool, the blanket is left in the water for six to 10 hours. Time is sensitive. If the blanket stays for too long, it can shrink and lose its shape and look. Washing the wool shrinks it down by 30 to 40 centimeters, something they take into account when planning the shape of the blanket. It also makes it thicker and tighter so it can last for years. When the washing is done, the blankets are put in this spinning machine to get rid of the water. They then hang them outside to dry for a few days. Yaroslav combs the blanket to make them feel softer, a practice that was not very common in the past and only started in the early 70s. The blankets were traditionally given as a wedding present and were even used as currency to barter for materials and animals. Today, they're in demand as works of art, and the craft continues to evolve. Their blankets sell for anywhere from $150 to $450. Special orders can cost more. It all depends on the colors used and the level of detail. Few among the younger generation are drawn to this labor-intensive craft, leaving the Hutzul community with only a handful of craftspeople. But Natalia and Yaroslav are passing it on to their children.